you can see, like, even for such a small set of ideas, right? You remember that table we just drew? It's not that complicated, but there's so many different ways you can turn it, right? Here's a new function. Find where it's increasing. Hence, sketch it showing stationary points. You'll notice that it's not asking for intercepts, uh, even though you would usually assume that there are intercepts. I wonder if you can work out as we go through this why it's the case that they're not going to ask for intercepts for a lot of these examples. Let's try this. What's our standard first step been so far? Oh, it's I'm going to differentiate, aren't I? Right? Like, I mean, I could, I could rewrite f if I needed to, if it was in a form that was awkward to differentiate, but this guy's about as good as it gets. Right? So I don't need to do anything to him. I'm just going to go straight to f dash. Sorry, this is question three. Okay, f dash, help me out. Come on, we can just say this out, can't we? Six x squared plus. Minus. minus. Sorry, I minus forgot what I wrote. 6x six six minus, minus 12. Plus. What? Yeah. yeah. Done. Okay. The, um, the 4, just to remember, why does the 4 contribute nothing to the derivative? Because it doesn't change the gradient. All it's doing is shifting up and down. Right? Shifting up and down, not changing how it behaves. It's changing its position. Okay. What do I do with this? What am I looking for? I want to know when it's increasing. I want to solve, right? So I'm going to introduce when the function is increasing. Right? When the function is increasing, f of x is greater than 0. Okay? Now just, just notice this, right? Remember I said, oh, please, please say something. Please provide me, like, the connecting pieces here, right? Just consider what it would mean to not have written this. Just, just think about what it would look like if that line wasn't there. I've calculated the derivative. Uh, when I, if, I, if I were to take out this line, okay, what kind of argument am I saying? I've got a derivative, and then suddenly I say the derivative is positive. Well, no, it's not. For a whole bunch of values, an infinite number of values, I'm about to show you what they are in a minute, it's not greater than zero. Right? So it only makes sense because I qualify it like this. Do you see how important it is to try and show you know what I'm talking about? Question? I forgot the dash. Uh, yeah, thank you. There we go. Okay, I've computed my derivative. So I'm going to substitute it in now, right? So I've got 6x squared, take 6, take 12. It's increasing, so it's greater than 0. Okay? I have a quadratic inequality. I have a quadratic inequality? Why do I have a quadratic inequality? Inequality. Why not? Well, for starters, why not? Uh, when I differentiated, I had a cubic, yeah. no squared. I'll let you keep thinking about that. You still haven't given me a geometric answer yet, but you'll have one by the time we finish this question. Keep thinking about it. If you've got an, an answer, let the rest of us catch up with you, okay? What am I going to do with this to solve it? Divide by 6. I can divide by 6 because 6 is positive. Nothing happens to the direction of the inequality. All good. Can I factorize this? Sure can, right? Someone give me the factorization. X plus one, X minus two. Ha! <laughs> okay, so hopefully we can see this clearly in our minds enough that you've got a root here, negative one. You've got a root of two, X equals two, I should say. Negative one, two, is it concave up or concave down? Up. It's concave up, okay? I want the positive bits, that's to the left. <laughs> and to the right, the outsides, right? So I'm going to say, therefore, x is less than negative one, negative one, one than x or x is greater than two. Oh. It's or because no, the there's time. no value of x that can be both of those simultaneously. Okay? okay? So I've answered the first part of the question. Yes? Are we allowed to do this parabola thing? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Now, I want to try and graph this thing, right? What does this mean? What does this mean? Given that I know it's a cubic, okay? I need one more pair of pieces of information to really do this properly, okay? Between here, sorry, I should say, to the left of here, I'm increasing. To the right of here, I'm also increasing. What does that imply? If that's the outside, what does that imply about the middle? It's going to be like that. Okay, so broadly speaking, right, 
um, this part is increasing, yeah. and this part is also increasing, in but in between, wrong. it's got to be decreasing, yeah. and that's kind of what oh. cubics do, oh. right? That's kind of what cubics do. Now, do you kind of see why? Yes. Of course you have to have a quadratic. That's the inequality you're going to get, because you need to have two regions where it's increasing. Do you see that? Cubics are like that by their very nature. Okay? Now, in order to really nicely graph this, I kind of want to know this spot and this spot. Because I gave you an overview of the course, I kind of already told you what those are called, right? What are they called? They've got two names. Because they stop there, not going up, not going down, and there, we call them stationary points. But these stationary points also, they go, they go up and then down, and then up, right? So they turn around and then maximum minimum, right? So I, I sort of want to know where they are. How do I work that out? Oh, when that equation equals, equals zero. Yeah, well, mm, hold on, hold on. I've kind of already solved that, what you're asking me, because by solving this, you see I already have the boundaries, yes. right? So I know what this x value will be, Oh yeah. and I know what this x value will be as well. Yes, right? So I'm, I'm going to need space over here. I'm going to say f of negative 1. That's going to give me some coordinates, okay? Here's the function up here, help me out. Two times. Negative two. One, negative okay, one. yeah, that's the whole thing, yeah. <laughs> so two times negative one, because that's what negative one cubed is. Uh, three times. One. One. Uh, minus, 12 times. Minus one. Negative one. Plus four. You okay with that? I think I did this that's one. 11. Is it 11? Yes. Yeah, good. Let's just go for that. Your other one, just to save you time, because in principle this is not difficult, okay? I think you'll get negative 16. You go and check it out, you may have already got that, okay? So now I know, right? <coughs> Excuse me. And negative 1, 11, it turns. And then at 2, negative 16, it turns again. I'm ready to draw. Yes, they yes, yes they can. Um, it is a little bit, but if the question is crafted properly, it won't be impossible. Like you can solve some cubics. Some cubics are very easy to solve. Like say this one. <laughs> right? <laughs> I guess that's not that hard. And there is an ex like, even even this is not that hard to solve either. Right? So it's not impossible. Um, okay. Now what am I going to do with this thing? Right? Uh, I have these points where it turns, I know where it's increasing, which kind of implies I also know where it's decreasing, right? So I'm ready to do this thing. Um, whoops, I've gone too far. Negative 1. I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily put 11 there, right? So if that's negative 1 and 11, then bam, that's one spot, okay? My next point is at 2, 1, 2. And if <coughs> I want to keep that roughly to scale, Bring that down and go a little bit further, maybe somewhere like that. Are you content with that? Like we're roughly in the ballpark? Okay. All right. Now, I know what's going to happen, how the graph is going to behave on the outside, because it's increasing. So I've got to increase up to that point. Right? Increase up to that point. Right? I mentioned before, I, I'm excluding the roots from this. Okay. You can find what the roots are, but I will talk about that in a second once I'm done with this. Okay? Um, down here, I know to the right of x equals 2, x is greater than 2, it's also increasing. Okay? And then in between, it does what all cubics do and does that. Though my scale is pretty bad it's because really that's supposed to be 4, but you'll just have to oh. forgive me for that. Okay? <laughs> Because, of course, you can see that um, that intercept is just sitting there, okay? But you get the general idea, right? Now, let's make a couple of comments on this before we move on. I, I, I didn't ask for the intercepts, okay? Now, you can solve where the intercepts are. Where is this thing? And this thing? And this thing, okay? However, and I will leave it to you. It's not hard to experiment with this. I will leave it to you to explore the fact that you notice my stationary points, right? My points where I stop and turn around, in this case. My stationary points are very nice and neat. Values like this, right? 
that necessitates the other points, these guys, being neat as well, right? The difference, the connection between them is differentiating. If one is neat, the other will be messy by necessity, okay? Um, and vice versa. If I gave you something like uh, okay, uh, x, or even something simple like this, what are the roots of this? These are nice easy roots. Zero, Zero. Zero. One. One. negative one, positive one. Okay, but when I have a go at this, so this is x cubed minus x, if I call that f, okay, quickly differentiate for me, f dash. 3x squared minus 1. Okay, now when I go ahead and solve this for when it goes stationary, when it turns around and so on, okay, you're going to get messy values out of it. You certainly won't get whole numbers, right? Uh, one on plus or minus 1 on root 3, I think. You're going to get something gross, and in fact, that's about as nice as it gets, honestly. If your roots, if your intercepts are nice, the stationary points will be gross. And if the stationary points are nice, then the intercepts will be gross. Okay? Um, I'll let you, it's not hard to experiment as to why. 